evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to all the viewers who have joined us from the various parts of the country abroad. Today, we have come together for the Virasat Talk 187 under the Indian Knowledge Tradition Lecture Series. The event is conducted in the joint collaboration of the Department of Archaeology and Historical Studies of Heritage Society and Heritage Society Goa Circle. I would, I would like to invite the Director General of the Heritage Society, Professor Anant Ashutosh Tuvivedi, who is also the chairperson for the today's session. And the keynote speaker for today, Professor Prajal Sakardande, the head of the history department of the Dhempe College, Miramar, Panji Goa. He has authored several books, has his notable works in the field of history and heritage in Goa. He is the founder member of the Goa Heritage Group, Action Group, an environmentalist and a heritage activist. The topic for today is history and heritage of Goa from ancient times to 10th century. On behalf of the organizing committee of this program, I, Mayura Neelam Rajesh Thakankar, member of the Heritage Society, Goa Circle, welcome you all to this enlightening session. Now I would like to invite the Director General, Professor Anand Asutosh Bivedi, sir, for the introductory speech. Uh Good evening to all of you. Myself, Professor Ananta Sutos Divedi, Director General of the Heritage Society. Feels truly fortunate, fortunate to be part of this August occasion. As we know, today is Christ Janmashtami. So, first of all, wishing you all a happy Christ Janmashtami. Christ Janmashtami and Auschwitz festival is celebrated every year with great fervor across the nation. They marks the birthday of Lord Krishna and this is the gift for our participants, our audience also on the occasion of birthday of Lord Krishna we have organized this talk his history and heritage of ancient Goa so this is our 187th episode of lecture series of Virasat talk we are very close to double century 200 series so this is a proud moment for all of the participants, all of the organizing committee members. And we will celebrate our double century lecture series, lectures. So we are very close to that. So on the behalf of our organizing committee of the two days distinct, distinguished session, inviting our distinguished speaker, Professor Perjwal Akhar Dandeji, head of the department of department of history, and also Associate Professor of History, Dhampe College of Arts and Science, Panji Goa, to deliver a talk on ancient Goa, history and heritage from yearly time to 10th century CE. I also invite to all the, our participants joining us this informative sessions from India and abroad. During our previous discussions with Prajwalji, we are planning to organize a series of lectures on the different themes of Goa heritage. So, this is the highly important session for all of us and the participants also for organizing too. That Prajwalji has accepted our request to deliver a lecture on yearly part of the Goa heritage. So, without taking much time, now I am requesting and inviting to our two days distinguished speaker, Dr. Prajwalji, to deliver a talk. Over to you, Mayur. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dwivedi, sir, for your blessings and kind support for initiating the series of Virasat Talk. Now I am requesting our today's distinguished speaker to deliver his talk. Everyone, a very happy and joyous Janmashtami. It's a very auspicious occasion uh, to begin the talk series, my talk series on the history and heritage of Goa. Uh, my sincere thanks to Professor Anant Ashutosh Divedi for this warm invitation. Thanks to my former student of history, 
Miss Mayura Kamath uh, for inviting me and for that introduction. With that, I would like to start, begin my presentation, the first part in the series on Goa. That is history and heritage of Goa from ancient times up to the advent of the Kadambas. This is my book called Goa Gold, Goa River History, Her Heritage from earliest time 2019. Pre Portuguese Goa. Now, pre Portuguese Goa can be divided into many sections. Today, I'm going to speak about the pre Kadamba Goa, that is ancient Goa from earlier times up to the advent of the Kadambas in the mid 10th century. This is the map of Goa. We have We have 12 talukas and two districts, North Goa district and South Goa district, running into 12 talukas. Etymologically, the first name that we come across is in our mother tongue, Kokni, that is Goi. Goi means a fertile land rich in paddy cultivation, rich in agriculture. And the prefix of coin, go, is a reference to cow, thereby to agriculture, a land that is cow, and there are Gomanta. Gopaka, Gopakapur, Goparashtra, Gorashtra, Goapuri, series of names that we come across. And in most of these names, we find that the word, the prefix go is common. That is a reference to cow. Now, it's a matter of research whether we begin our etymological roots in Prakrit or Sanskrit precede the Parshuram legend and precede the arrival of Saraswats in Goa. It is the tribal communities that set up the Daukaris during the Neolithic times. But Goa predates to the Paleolithic age, followed by the Mesolithic age, Megalithic age, the Chalcolithic culture, then the Bronze Age and Iron Age. And we have several cultures defined by her river valleys, such as the Madhai River Valley culture, the Kushavati River Valley culture, the Zuari River Valley culture, the Dudsagar River Valley cultures, wherein we find the presence of caves, rock art, tunnels, cave temples, Preceding the establishment of the Gaukari's village communities by the tribal communities in the Neolithic times. Goa is defined by her natural heritage. We have beautiful waterfalls such as this in our various villages of Goa, such as Kuske. The highest mountain peak of Goa is Sosogard or Sosogard. When we trekked to Sosogard in 2004, we found a cave on top of Sosogard, perhaps one of the oldest natural caves of Goa. We discovered an underground tunnel, perhaps one of the ancient sites of Goa, it was a long tunnel. We entered the tunnel in the village called Daboli. It is near the airport in Goa. 
we have found several caves and tunnels that speak of the paleolithic times this is an underground caved chamber that we saw in izorshi that we discovered in izorshi where we released a ladder an electric bulb we went to the bottom of this cave and the archaeologists that were there they said that it belongs to the megalithic age here we found that it was a human made cave and not a natural one it had dress laterite now to what usage these caves were dug for there are various interpretations we are in the process of finding out we are trying to get these caves notified under the goa state archaeology or under the asi at another set of caves are the caves in chikali this is on the way to vasco city in this cave in this underground caves in chikali village in the daboli panchayat where the airport is located dr gritli mitter volner a german lady researcher she had discovered these caves and she had found potsherds pieces of pottery that is the first indication of human life or culture or civilization in goa in ancient goa the fact that potsherds were found in this underground caves in chikali indicates that there was human life and these potsherds are now preserved in the goa state museum we are trying to get these caves notified under state archaeology or under the archaeological survey of india and the biodiversity committee at another cave we discovered and we saved it in thivi this is near mapsa mapsa is a commercial town a few kilometers from panjim and there we found this cave this is a partly this is natural and it's also fashioned by human hands and we saw a shivling that might have been introduced there later perhaps this was a residential cave and we are very happy that we could save this cave from being demolished this is a cave temple as our earliest people ancient people used to dedicate various facets of nature they worship them in caves these are the cave temples the earliest cave temple is the is in the village of shigaon located on the banks of the dudh sagar river bed this is dedicated to tiger worship and the locally this date is called vagro meaning tiger this is an underground cave in the village of rishivan or rivana these are the chikli caves here we have the archaeologists biodiversity committee wherein we inspected the site for its notification this is the top view of the chikli caves this is the interior view of the chikli caves a beautiful river called the kushavati in south goa showcases shows a variety of facets of goa's heritage the general perception of people all over the country is that goa does not have a culture only a land of fun and frolic we have a rich culture we have this river valley cultures and here i'm speaking about kushavati river valley culture in fact the first capital of goa that is chandrapur or chandor in south goa near margao was located on the banks of kushavati river recently this site on the banks of the kushavati in a hamlet called pansaimal 
I appeal to everyone. If you visit Goa, do visit this site, which is declared as now on the tentative list of UNESCO's World Heritage. This is the second World Heritage site in Goa. In a hamlet called Pansaimar in South Goa, in the village of Dhandore. So this is the Kushavati Heritage Trail, which I always do with my students of history. And here on the laterite bed are depicted petroglyphs, Petra meaning lock, rock and glyph is art. This is rock art, ancient rock art. We do not know its age. People believe that it is thousands of years old. And here you see the depiction of a humped bull, zebu bull and a deer locked in a battle, locking their horns. It's a very beautiful sight. On one laterite bed, on the banks of Kushavati, we find this petroglyphs. This is a peacock. You can see the beak, the crown and the contours of the body. On the same side, contiguous, contiguously we see this rock art in Pansai Mal, also known as Uzgai Mal. Across the Kushavati River is Uzgai Mal, but this entire site is popularly known as Uzgai Mal, Pansai Mal. And I appeal to every Indian, every visitor to Goa, every foreigner visitor to Goa, foreign visitor to Goa, do make a visit to this beautiful rock art heritage site in south of Goa, located in a forest. This is a human figure. You can see the contours of the body. This is a maze or a labyrinth where you find concentric circles. This is open to interpretation. Various interpretations are available of this site. It may be associated with shamanistic rituals or rituals connected with ancient Goa, may be connected with astronomical calculations. We do not know. It's open to interpretation. Various theories are floated. This is a Zebu bull that is seen at the same site. Let us not dismiss this as rock bruisings. These are beautiful carvings chiseled on the megalithic stone in the megalithic age. At another site on the banks of Kushavati is in the village of Kajur or Kajra. I'm showing you the lesser known Goa or the unknown Goa. Most people talk about a one-liner that Portuguese ruled over Goa for 451 years. Hardly people talk about our rich pre-Portuguese past, ancient Goa. Ancient Goa was rich in culture, rich in cultural heritage, as I'm showing you. In the village of Kajra or Kajur in Kepen Taluka, you find a huge rock. It's called Duda Fator, literally translating as milk stone. On it, we find beautiful carvings of antelope from the family of the deer. And this is worship now. People regard it as a sacred stone. These were carvings done by the unknown artist. We do not know who they were. And we have no way of knowing because the, on the Laterite stone at Pansaimal, it is difficult to employ carbon-14 and carbon-14 uh, technique, dating techniques. This is in the same village, several stone circles. Stone circles in honor of the dead, popularly known as Baitak. At another site in the Madai or Mandavi river culture is this rock art site called Maushi or Maus. On the rock, a bull is depicted. And on many of these rocks, on the Zarme river bed of the Mandavi river, the most popular river in Goa, famous river in Goa, Mandavi, you will find that in this taluka of Sattari, in the eastern side of Goa, you have this village called Maushi. 
at the foot of the sayyadris or the western ghats on the eastern side of goa are located the western ghats because they are on the western side of india we find rock carvings in the village of shigaon one of the oldest villages of goa we have megaliths we have stone memorials in honor of the dead chieftains of the village they are variously known as barazan 12 villagers later on they are precursor to the panchayat system in the village of azagaon that is known as village of valley of flowers we find a stone in a pyramidical shape that is known as katar katar meaning caesar in our kokni language we call it katar now this is a stone which is demarcating the boundaries of three villages our ancient people in goa worship mother earth in the form of a mound of earth or the termite hill called the rohin locally that is rohini mother goddess mother earth and later on she was given the name of sateri or sater a symbolic of mother earth this is in the village of viridi in northern goa the female genital organs were also worshiped in the form of yoni the tallest icon of betal the local folk deity in the village of lolie in the southernmost taluka of goa called kankon this is a ancient sculpture one of the tall images of the local folk deity called betal is also regarded as the guardian local folk deity the rakhandar the first fort of goa is chandrapur located in the first capital of goa chandrapur perhaps this fort was built during the bhoj period or maybe earlier during the satvahan period or maybe during the kadamb period research is on the archaeological survey of india had conducted some excavation close to the fort now only a mud ramification remains only the mud ramparts of the fort remains and very close to this fort is the 11th century kadamba era temple in fact two temples were discovered here one by father henry heras of the heras institute bombay and the other by archaeological survey of india while they were excavating they found a nandi here and they also found an underground temple dating to the satvahan period because of the presence of the satvahan coin in 150 ce gautami putra satkarni the satvahan king had attacked goa and conquered and made goa part of his kingdom we do not have inscriptional evidence for this but we have they found a coin of the satvahan era 150 ce and hence it was concluded that before the first historically known dynasty of goa the bhoj there might have been satvahans folklore also has it that one of the dharmadikaris of samrat ashok purna purna or punna by name purna meaning the complete one was a buddhist missionary in goa from this it was believed that goa might have come under the sway of the maurya dynasty from magadh modern day bihar we do not have sufficient evidence to prove this but there is folklore there is numismatic evidence 
about Shatwans. These are dynasties that predated the first historically known dynasty of Goa by way of inscriptional evidence that is the Bhoj. And the Bhoj dynasty had their capital in Chandrapur, that is today's Chandor. Portuguese named Chandrapur as Chandor. It is in South Goa, accessible from Margao, one of the southern chief towns of Goa. We find here various temples. There are various temples in Goa. The general belief is that Goa only has churches. That is not true. Goa has a large number of temples, beautiful temples. One such temple in its ruined form also gives an irresistible look. This particular temple is located in the remote village of Vitsundre, again on the banks of the Kushavati. Here I'm talking about the Kushavati river valley culture. Here we have a beautiful icon of 10th century C dating to the Shilahar Kadam period. More plausible Shilahar because the Shilahars were worshippers of Vishnu. Next to this is a temple built during the Kadamba period, Kadamba period. So here you have the worship of Vishnu and at the side you have worship of Shiva. And there is the beautiful Garud also, which was the emblem of the Shilahars. The Shilahars came from Maharashtra and there were three Shilahar families, such as the North Konkan Shilahar, South Konkan Shilahar and the Kolapur Shilahars. Of this, North Konkan Shilahars and the South Konkan Shilahars ruled over Goa. Now, as part of the uh, Kushavati Heritage Trail, I'm talking of the Shilahars here and the beautiful icon of Narayan Dev with a beautiful Prabhaval that is hello at the back. This is one of the most beautiful icons of a deity in Goa. Much before the Shilahars, as I was talking of the Boj kings, then came the Konkan Maurya kings, then came the Badami Chaluk, then came the Shilahars, and then came the Kadams. This is a lovely site in South Goa called the Budbudanchi Tari, that is the lake of bubbles. This is a beautiful pond, not a, more than a lake, it is a pond, I would say, adjacent to the Gopinath temple. The Gopinath temple was again built by the Shilahars originally, dedicated to Lord Krishna. And today on the Janmashtami day, we are remembering Lord Krishna. This pond of bubbles, I'm showing this Silahar sites because when I do the Kushavati heritage trail with my students, all this comes in one sequence and chronology. So when any person from outside Goa would like to visit Goa, do make a visit to the Kushavati heritage sites, such as this one in the village of Netravari in Sanya Taluka. Sati stones. Ancient Goa shows a number of Sati stones, especially of the early medieval period, you'll find here a number of Sati stones dating to ancient times and early medieval period. Sati was a practice all over the country and in Goa, we have a large number of Sati stones commemorating the death of women that went Sati. It's a very cruel practice where the woman was forced to immolate herself on the funeral pyre of her husband at his death. 
with the belief that she would unite with him for seven lives and here if you look closely observe the sati stone closely this is in the village of kolam as part of the kushavati heritage trail you will find a woman's raised hand you will also find small icons of the sun and the moon that with the philosophy that the woman will be united with her husband for seven lives till the sun and the moon exist so number of sati stones are seen in various parts of goa the earliest people living in goa were the tribal communities such as the kunbis the proto australo and munda stock that spoke kokni our mother tongue this is the kunbi sari the red checked sari these were the hindu kulmis or kulwa that were later on converted to christianity by the portuguese gaudas vapes now these are nomenclatures of the same kunbi racial stock in different parts of goa a very and a gauda women dressed in the traditional attire fish is the staple food of goa and the fisherman and the fisher woman play a very important role the staple food of goa is rice fish fish curry locally available vegetables and here you find the local fisherman getting a huge catch of fish and the fish of women selling fish in the market the different types of food you have the most famous fish of goa the bangdo we eat a number of a variety of shell fish such as the tisryo kube shinani kalwa crabs other utensils in which rice was cooked fish curry was cooked and at the back you see the gurgulet the water canteen in which the water remained cool and it acted as a natural refrigerator you have the coconut ladle you have the earthen bowl for the pears or the kanji people had that food on dried jackfruit leaves pinned together and also on banana leaves this is a popular dessert dessert in goa popular dessert in goa not dessert sorry dessert called satwa which is made of nashni another popular food so goa has a number of desserts a number of food items this is the staple food of goa where you have rice fish curry fried fish local vegetables such as the tamdi bhaji and here you have the pink sol kadi the goan goldsmiths made a variety of ornaments beautiful ornaments goa has a number of communities and in ancient times these communities but if i got divided into castes so number of peoples lived in goa 
professing different communities and that evolved later on into a caste system this is a beautiful design called the kavi art kavi art is a pre portuguese art before the arrival of the portuguese using the pigment from the red soil content of goa called uramunji or cow this type of designs were chipped on the walls of the temples one such temple we managed to save in north goa in the village of agarwado padne and this was dedicated to chetrapal the local folk deity this was the temple we got it conserved we had a campaign for it and he, here you find the icon of ganpati in the kavi art that is an art that was flourishing in goa much before the arrival of the portuguese during the portuguese time we have the graffito art that is red oxide during portuguese times and this is the red pigment in the soil called uramunji this is at another temple dedicated to mulvir there are various folk deities in goa one such folk deity is mulvir where on the walls of this temple in northern goa in the village of malpe in padne taluka the northernmost taluka of goa you find on the ceilings since from ramayan mahabharat and the 10 uh, and the avatars of vishnu by using natural dyes as well as the carve beautiful river called madai also known as mandavi this is my village called ambeshi ambeshi village is in bicholi taluka in spite of the mining around it it has remained beautiful and green it is on banks of the river madai or mandavi this is an ancient temple in my village dedicated to shivanath with the shivling we have a number of temples dedicated to shiva or shivlings this is built of laterite stone and the shivling is made of basalt the state heritage tree is coconut the state tree of goa is matti but the state heritage tree is coconut and coconut is used kalpa vruksh for a variety of it has a variety of usages in goa you cannot imagine without uh, you, you cannot imagine the fish curry without the coconut plus the coconut curry that is made using the skin of the kokum fruit there is a fruit available in goa called kokum which is popular and a curry is made of that called sol curry this is with the coconut and one is without the coconut so this is the coconut tree and the person that is climbing the tree here is the reindeer that is the toddy tapper he draws the sour from the coconut makes liquor out of coconut and also jaggery was traditionally made out of the coconut and that was used in all the sweet preparations and not sugar sugar arrived in goa in 1878 as a result of the anglo portuguese treaty jaggery was used in goa for all the desserts this is a beautiful pond which we saved in gawana karmona in south goa lotus pond one of the most beautiful icons of ancient goa is the gajalakshmi panel seen in the eastern part of goa in a village called kurshe gajalakshmi is the deity the local deity wherein you see here two elephants performing a bishek and the gajalakshmi in the center gajalakshmi gaja meaning elephant and lakshmi the goddess of wealth 
and you will find on the panel below people celebrating the gajalakshmi on horseback and with the traditional musical instruments this is dating to the kadamba era goa has a number of festivals some local festivals the most popular one is the shigmo celebrating the rich harvest and here you have a folk festival called zagor keeping awake the spirits the local spirits various folk dances are performed during the shigmo such as the talgadi gof toniya me divli nats this is the celebration of light as our beautiful country india there is no other country like india and what we have in india none of the other countries have let us be proud of the fact that we are the only country in the world that celebrates light in the form of diwali that celebrates color in the form of holi that celebrates harvest in the form of baisakhi so we have we have inherited a rich cultural heritage and here we have the divli nats celebration of light by using this traditional lamps in goa the tarnga ghode modni is a warrior dance that happens in goa commemorating the victory of the kings veera bhadra this is an influence of karnataka again it is a folk dance that has dynastic influence of the kadamba and the vijayanagar period the invocation is in kannad dhalo is a folk dance that is performed by the women in the month of poush corresponding to january and february women celebrate the joys and happiness of life through various stories some stories of the ramayan and the mahabharat the abduction of sita her release fugdi another folk dance performed by women the tribal community of the gaulis or the dhangars celebrate their joys in the form of chapai or pandaricha pawa they for they worship a formless deity called pander malchi pander this is not a this photograph is not of a stage performance but i went to the village of maroli and witnessed this beautiful performance a warrior dance of the gauri and the dhangar community i'm trying to show you the other side of goa the unseen side of goa the lesser known side of goa we have kalshi fugdi dancing with pots celebrating water every facet of nature is celebrated water that is jeevan life we have the festival of ghosts called butanchi jatra in narve bicholi where the spirits of hindu women that died in child birth that is invoked here we have various exorcist festivals such as this worship of the crocodile that happens in two villages of goa talauli and bhoma in the ponda taluka the most beautiful shivling i have used the superlative of the most because i have not come across any other shivling as beautiful as this in goa it is beautifully chiseled showing a toran mango leaves and at the bottom there is the face of lalana the goddess of beauty 
This is in the village of Ravan. We have villages named after Ravan. Here you have the village of Ravan in the eastern part of Goa in Satari. This icon of Ganpati is dating to the Badami Chalukya period, one of the oldest icon of Ganpati. We are close to the Ganesh festival and here the chief festival of Goa is Ganesh Chaturthi locally called as Savat because it is celebrated on the fourth day of the Bhadrapat month. And this is this icon is dedicated to Ganpati. You can see the beautiful ornamentation on this icon. It is preserved in the seminary museum in Pilar by Father Cosme Costa. And here you will find that it is dating to the Badami Chalukya period. I went to Badami and corroborated this. And in the Badami museum in Karnataka, I could see exactly a similar icon. And then I was convinced that this icon in Goa is of the Badami Chalukya period after the archi architectural corroboration. Parshuram, I've spoken about him that he settles 96 Saraswat families in Goa. It's a legend, it's history, it's heritage. Various rituals are performed. The Aryanization of Goa, the Sanskritization of Goa, you have the pre-Hindu tribal communities worshipping nature, then you have the Sanskritization and you have later conversion of many Hindus to Roman Catholicism. This is the beautiful festival dedicated to nature, to ecology, to environment, to knowledge, the god of ecology and environment, the god of knowledge, Ganapati. And in Goa, we have a tradition of the matoi, a canopy of the locally found roots, fruits and vegetables that are found here in the month of Shravan and Bhadrapad. They are celebrated. Every aspect of Ganapati celebration is scientific, therapeutic, symbolic and cultural. Various dynasties ruled Goa. I have already spoken about the Boj dynasty, the first historically known dynasty from the 4th to the 6th century C. We do not know whether they were local or they came from Karnataka because in the inscription of the first king of Goa, Devraj Bhoj, he is referred to as Devraj Bhoj Gominam. From the word Gominam, from the suffix of Gominam, it's quite possible that it might be, have been a local dynasty, one does not know, or maybe from Karnataka. Various Bhoj kings ruled over Goa, such as Prithvi Malla Varman, Kapali Varman, Asankita Varman. The Bhoj were followed by the Konkan Maurya kings, the descendants of the original Mauryas that ruled Goa in the 7th century CE, followed by the Badami Chalukyas. Now, as you know, that the Mauryas came from Magad, that is Bihar. And the Mauryas set up an all India empire. The first empire of India was the Maurya Empire. The first emperor of India was Chandragupta Maurya, followed by Bindusar and Ashok and many other kings. Ashok had spread Buddhism in various parts of India and Asia. 
the first emperor of india chandragupta maurya and the maurya ruled from 322 bc to 185 bc and the period of ashok was 232 272 bc to 232 bc and perhaps the descendants of the mauryas that ruled ancient goa were called konkan mauryas because goa was part of konkan here is a reference to two kings chandravarman and king anirjitavarman after that you have the, the balukya dynasty from karnataka karnataka is our neighbor maharashtra is our neighbor so the badami chalukyas from the karnataka region ruled over goa in the 7th century c there were various rulers the first woman ruler of goa was queen vijay bhattarika or queen vijay mahadevi in fact two dynasties ruled over goa in the 7th century konkan mauryas and the badami chalukyas after that came the shilahars from maharashtra region between the 8th to the 10th century c now we do not use the term ad we use the term c that is the common era but for the understanding of people i have used the term ad which was done earlier now we use the term terminology bce before common era and ce that is common era this is the inscription of the first bhoj king of the first historically known first king of goa devraj bhoj i have seen this inscription held it in my hand and this inscription is a land grant to a priest this is a beautiful temple on a hill in goa in south goa in a village called paroda the bhoj kings built this temple very close to their capital of chandrapur and this is a hill temple it is in the form of a cave on this on the cave temple this superstructure was built it was rebuilt by the kadam in the 11th century and there is also a shrine dedicated to bhutnath here goa has many exorcist rituals i have said one such festival or ritual is the shisharani where rice is cooked on their heads of the gade that is the man in trance they go in trance and this festival is dedicated to the local folk deity malkazan or mallikarjun this happens in the southern taluka of goa called kankon yet another exorcist festival is the festival of thieves where men are buried inside the ground and some are some heads are exposed with their torso buried in the ground it's called chorotsav these are unique exorcist rituals and festivals in goa this is in the eastern part of goa in sattari taluka in two villages of dharme and karanzol this is the ritual of vade kadap he dips his hand in the hot boiling vessel and draws vade vade is a kind of a savory of ancient goa the bhoj kings built this caves dedicated to the shivling or shiva the most popular caves in goa that one must visit while in goa are the harwale caves and the inscription of the bhoj king kapali varman dating to the 6th century ce talks about the harwale caves and the waterfall called udak path it's a sanskrit term meaning waterfall while on a visit with madam romila thapar the foremost historian of india according to her these are the buddhist caves and later on shivlings were introduced one does not know because the inscriptional evidence shows that this was these were built by the bhoj king 
Kapali Varman. And one of the inscriptions, there is the mention of Shambalur Vasi Ravi, meaning the old name of this village, Harvare, was Shambalur, and Ravi is son. This is while we were uh, taking around Professor Romila Thapar. One of the oldest inscriptions in Goa, in the Brahmi script, according to the house, it is written there, Badami Chalukya. One does not know, maybe Badami Chalukya or maybe early Kadambas. This is located in the village of Chandrapur or Chandor, the first capital of Goa. The second capital of Goa was Goapuri Gopak Patan, today known as Goa Velia. And this was a flourishing port during the Shilar period and later the Kadamba period. With the entry of the Kadambas from Karnataka, Goa enters a new phase of history from mid 10th century up to the advent of the Bahamanis. In Goa, the villages during the Kadamba period were known as Hardis, and the Kadambas ruled over Goa from 980 CE to 1356 for a period of three and a half centuries. So we have these various dynasties that ruled over uh, Goa, the peopling of Goa, the various communities that resided in Goa, the various communities that resided in Goa, and thus it fills me with a sense of pride to tell you that Goa has a rich cultural history, a rich cultural heritage. That is, that dates you from the prehistoric times, Paleolithic age, up to mid 10th century, as was the topic of today's discussion. In Goa, we sign off by saying Deo Barekoru in Kokni. Namaskar. Thank you, sir, for this informative talk. It was very insightful for me, and I believe the viewers too who have joined us today. Uh, now, I would like Professor Dwivedi to give his concluding remarks. Thank you, Mayura. Uh, first of all, I can overheartedly, wholeheartedly congratulate to our distinguished speaker, Prajwal Sakar Dandeji, for discussing on the highly demanding topic that is ancient Goa heritage, history and heritage. As we know, Heritage Society has organized a series of lectures on the different themes of the Indian knowledge systems. And as I have remembered, in last two years, we have organized two lectures on the different topics of Goa. One lecture just last month we have organized and last year we have organized. Uh, a relic casket was found a, 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 a pin of foreign ruler. And in the Indian government had donated that really casket to the that too. So, so this is the third important, highly highly important lecture on the ancient Goa history and heritage. So, first of all, many thanks to our esteemed speaker Prajwalji for presenting such an incredible talk this evening on the theme as I have mentioned in this lecture series. It is believed that known for sea beaches among the youths of India and abroad too. But your presentation brought us several uniqueness of Goa, the importance of these sites, these intangible heritage are hardly discussed in the common masses. Other part of the country, it is believed that in Goa, we can see only churches and forts because they don't know the importance of Goa 
rural heritage of Goa also because they visit in the cities and the sea. There are numerous sea beaches. There are a number of beaches and forts also of different time periods. But our friends must have been surprised to know that the outstanding universal value of rock art on the bank of Kusavati that has been listed in the tentative category of world heritage site. We are not. Uh, we were not aware regarding that the Goa has tradition of rock art too. There is not to say that the Goa is having continuous cultural sequences starting from the Stone Age cultures, and we have shown a number of slides on on the, on the different like, archaeological, archaeologically and historically speaking, the pictures of ancient Goa in your presentations. Have allowed us to pay a virtual tour of different places of the region. Along with your presentations, has also discussed tunnels, caves, rock arts, sculptures, temples, cultural assemblages of tribe, tribes, etc. Many more. And also highlighted its uniqueness too. We are privileged to hear you, sir. Thank you, Vis, on the behalf of Heritage Society, and. Uh, this uh, presentation, I was thinking that heritage societies should take some projects on the lesser known heritage of Goa, and we will be happy to uh, invite some scholars, distinct, distinguished scholars from that region, to engage in that project, and the future heritage students too, because they have to engage also in the progress project, the students and the research scholars. Uh, I think there is a need of documentation of lesser knowledge of Goa because pre presently I am in Bihar and I am a student of archaeology, but I am not very much aware that the importance of uh, uniqueness of Christian heritage of Goa. We we read in our classes, in our textbooks, the very uh, highlights of the uh, Christian age of Goa, but we are not aware in in deep, in deeply we we have not studied. So so heritage society has interested and willing to work on some projects on the lesser known objects, and uh, during this lecture uh, we think that the some of the, some of our the students also and the participants too and the eminent scholar will take interest to work on those projects because I personally am very much interested to work on the tribal culture because day by day that culture is being modernized modernized so in a coming generation in a coming time we'll, we will not be able to document the uniqueness of the particular tribes, the cultural assemblages, cultures of the tribes too. And I am also interested to work on the sculptures, a sculptures on the Goa of different time period. And I have some uh, question in my mind that what is the time period of the yearly sculptures of Goa? So, because in Middle India and Middle India plain, we date the sculpture from 3rd century BCE, from the Mauryan time period, Yakshini, Yaksh, etc. Asoka and Pilar also. But what is, I want, I am very much interested to know that though. What is the scenario, scenario in Goa? From this time period, we get the sculpture. Do you have any references? I'm requesting you, sir. Please. Yes. Uh, in Goa, as I have mentioned, uh, I have shown the sculpture of Ganpati, Ganesh. Uh, that is dated to the Badami Chalukya period. That is seventh century CE. Now, I was not easily convinced that it is seventh century CE, but uh, so I, when I was doing my MPhil, I did uh, corroborative architectural. Uh, I needed architectural evidence, so I went to Badami. And that's where I saw exact the same icon there. 
and that was also dated to the 7th century and it was written there it is badami chalukya period so that is uh, um of the bhoj era we do not find many sculptures so we can date the sculptures of goa from the 7th century c onwards uh so okay uh, i would say from the badami chalukya period uh, we are in a position to see but uh, um, uh, i would also state that uh, before the badami chalukyas you know the shivlings that are there the shivlings that are there uh, which i have shown in harwale caves in harwale caves you find those shivlings now they are dating to the 6th century um, uh, era so uh, 6th century ce according to the inscription of kapali varman uh, uh, there is there is a mention of shivlings and there is another cave called lamgaon caves in which there is a shivling which is again dated to bhoj king asankita varman so uh, we have sculptures uh, i mean the shivlings uh, from the boj period and then we have proper icons uh, or proper sculptures of uh, the idols i mean uh, of the gods and goddesses from badami chalukya period uh, so uh, uh, here again now sculptures uh, when you take shivling as a sculpture then i would definitely say from the boj period that is from i would say 6th century ce boj period begins from 4th to the 6th century but we have shivlings from 6th century ce but the proper uh, in the form of icons or um, uh, the figures of gods and goddesses from badami chalukya period uh, so however we have to say that the sculptural finds begin i would say from the boj period which is the first historically known dynasty or the first historically known period uh due to the presence of the sculpture uh, due to the presence of the inscription of the first king of goa that is so known historically uh devraj bhoj so after that devraj bhoj you have prithvi vallabha varman then you have um uh, kapali varman then you have asankita varman so the sculptures i would date from if you take shivlings as the sculptures then from the bhoj period and um icons of gods and goddesses Uh, from badami chalukya period and then uh, we have sculpture of uh, kings and queens from kadamba period thank you thank you very much and and from the rock cut architecture from which period rock cut architecture starts in that region yeah now uh, rock cut art as of now uh, we believe that it is of megalithic age like some of the archaeologists who were with me they said it is megalithic age and many a scholars have expressed their opinion that it is megalithic age some say it is mesolithic age but uh, uh, that it is megalithic age sounds more plausible and convincing uh, going by the later uh, rock arts uh, the span and the spread and the uh, uh, availability of so many stone memorials uh, from the megalithic age i would say that the, that particular rock art in pansaimal usgaimal which is now on the tentative list of unesco's world heritage definitely of the megalithic age uh, uh, which is preceding the neolithic age and then you have uh, the sculptures of the animals and also human figures so whatever they found they saw in the wild they have carved on stone and these are cannot be dismissed as rock bruisings they are properly chiseled rock carvings so and uh, very beautiful ones and that is the reason they are now on the tentative world list of world heritage so i would definitely say it is megalithic age yeah. Yeah. thank you and what is the what is the time period of rock cut uh, caves in that region there is a megal megalithic now, rock cut caves that that is a bit of a problem because uh, it is the laterite stone and laterite stone you cannot employ carbon 14 and 15 dating techniques as that's what is told to me um Uh, so far it has not been dated so it is very difficult to like some people say they are 8000 some people say 5000 6000 but i am not very much convinced that uh, it is 8000 and all that so that is uh, sort of uh, uh, we have not arrived at a proper consensus as to the age of that those carvings so it is in the process some day we will be uh, we will be in a position to know its age maybe through some technique i do not know maybe thermal luminescence or what is the technique i do not know but it is in the process yeah thank you 
thank you thank you very much once again to our distinguished speaker thank you very uh, much dr divedi and we will be very much happy to invite you again uh, to uh, to deliver yes. because we are we are very interested to uh, uh, organize a series of lectures on the uniqueness of goa on the different topics of the goa and and in in one lectures we have covered very uh, uh, vast vast timeline it is right it was very difficult for anybody to uh, include all those slides in one presentation from the a stone right. sculpture to the 10th century ad yes so so and and we have done you have done very uh, very uh, intelligently i mean can say very uh, scientifically you have arranged on those slides so so thank you thank you very much and thank you thank uh, you very much uh, we are privileged to you and over to you mayura yeah thank you sir for your comments on this occasion i would like to extend my gratitude uh, to everyone present here i mayura nilam rajesh thakankar on behalf of the heritage society and its large family show my gratitude to our profound speaker professor prajal sakardande i thank you sincerely for accepting our invitation and present a talk on the platform i also thank our director general professor anant ashutosh tivedi sir for actively organizing today's talk and giving us the opportunity to present the knowledge of the goan heritage and history thank you to all the participants watching from different parts of the world thank you thank you all